So, Tom, many of us have heard the phrase PHP worker, but frankly, we're not sure what it is. Could you enlighten us? Sure. So a PHP worker is basically, it's a process that accomplishes a request, usually from WordPress, to perform an action in memory for PHP. So you could think about it like if you're going to log into your site, and this is overly simplified, but... If you log into your site, you're going to need a PHP worker to go and validate your username and password. It has to query the database. So it's going to perform a task that you request on your website. And is there any kind of real world example you could give us to help us understand that? Because to be honest, I got a little bit lost halfway through. (laughs) A good analogy is think about you walk into a retail store and there is one cash register and one person helping customers check out. Now imagine you have a line of 10 people that wanna buy something. That one cashier can only go so fast. That's your PHP worker. And if your website has too many requests all at once, then that website will start to get slower and slower and slower. It's like the queue, it builds up all these, a queue of requests. And then the website has to process them. Well, if you add two, three, four more cash registers in your store, now you can actually accommodate multiple people checking out at once. And this is a great example actually in real e-commerce stores where you want to have concurrent users checking out. Maybe you're doing a large flash sale. You need to have many, many, many PHP workers so that your site can continually process all the requests without having to make those requests wait in a queue. And that's one of the ways you can keep your site running really quickly. So just like in the real world, what are some potential issues if we have a shortage of PHP workers? Sure, let's take the analogy to another level. So we talked about this idea that if people have to wait in line, it means that it takes a longer period of time for a request to complete. And that could that would be equal to a slowdown in your website. But imagine if the line is so large, what are people going to do if they don't want to wait? They're going to leave your store, right? This is akin to people having an error on your site. You know, we all know that sites have a particular period of time that they will wait for a process, 30, 60 seconds for PHP before it times out. Well, if your line becomes too long, then your PHP workers cannot process all of those requests before they time out. And that will lead to customers actually getting an error on the site. So you can get everything from slowdowns to errors with not enough PHP workers. And what would be the best way of solving it? Is it literally just throwing as many PHP workers at the problem as you can? And how do you know how many you need? That's a great question, Lee. There's actually a finely tuned balance between PHP workers, CPU, and overall memory for your site. You might think, well, I'm just going to add 200 workers to fix my problem, but every worker uses a specific amount of RAM, and that varies widely based on what the worker is doing in the site. You likely won't have enough overall RAM to support running 200 workers. And you'll then start getting out of memory errors, which you're back in the same place with your your PHP worker errors. So we want to keep the site fast and we also want to keep it error free. So we have to have the right balance of the proper amount of workers based on the right amount of RAM that you have and the right amount of CPU that you have. Okay, so going back to that analogy again, I'm a store manager and I'm not 100 percent sure how many people are going to be shopping necessarily. I don't want to hire too many staff um, because that's going to cost me and that's going to erode my profitability. How does a company work out what sort of RAM and CPU usage combination they need? Basically, we help people figure that out. There's a few ways you can do this. And I would say the vast majority of, of people out there are unaware of what kind of capacity their store needs. One of the best things that you can do is to watch a sale that you have in real time. So look at how many workers, how much PHP, how much RAM is in use. So you can start to understand how your store performs with 100 people on it or after 100 orders in a given period of time. That will help you understand how it might uh, work under load of like Black Friday or something like that. 
The other thing that you can do if you have a big upcoming event and you have no context about how your store performs is to run a load test. And a load test is where we simulate a large amount of traffic coming to the site and we figure out how many orders per second can your store handle. That's what I recommend for people that have large events where they have to really minimize the likelihood that there might be any type of failure to occur. We have to run tests, analyze the store under load, and actually know we can handle X amount of users with the resources that we have. So for any upcoming Black Friday, this is something I imagine you recommend done a month or two in advance. I think that the easiest thing to do is to throw hardware at these problems. So you can always upgrade your hardware, upgrade your resources, but there are some bottlenecks that just scale very, very ineffectively. And so those sometimes have to be handled with code changes or might you might decide, man, there's a plugin that I don't really need to run and I want to disable that for my large sale. And so you can make some selective choices. Um, you know, a lot of times we find people trying to run every plugin all the time and they might not need every plugin. They may be doing a very, very quick sale and they might be able to disable several plugins that do things in automated processes later. And so that really helps to lessen the load and focus on generating the most revenue possible with the best possible customer experience. So a very typical example for us would be we disable admin columns in the back end because no one can see that. It doesn't affect the actual client site, but for us, it does add weight, at least in the back end, et cetera. So it's just one less thing running in the background. Mm -hmm. Right, exactly. That's a really good analogy. Again, back to that really cool analogy. We all know a busy supermarket is going to struggle with having enough cashiers. What sort of websites commonly struggle with a shortage of PHP workers? So we most commonly see this when you cannot cache a request. So if you have highly cacheable content, say you're a publisher, a news site, something like that, um, or even just a static brochure where, website, those type of sites rarely have worker issues at scale. I mean, if there's very few workers, they might, but if it's a serious website getting, you know, tens or hundreds of thousands of visitors and properly dialed in workers, we won't see a very large amount of workers needed. Where you start to see this happen is e-commerce sites, membership sites, sites where you're gonna do login and protect content, uh, online learning type of sites, LMS sites, where you have a lot of people taking a course all at once. These are the type of scenarios where you cannot cache this information and there's a bunch of people trying to do something simultaneously, that's where you need a really healthy, proper amount of workers. Would that be the same for some of these giveaway campaigns as well, where you're trying to get people to uh, subscribe and also then get, invite other people? I assume that's a page that can't be cached because that's content that needs to be filled in. Well, it depends because the page itself and the page request can be cached, mm -hmm. but the actual submission of the entrant uh, for the giveaway, yeah. that function is going to need to use a PHP worker. And so what's really great about those type of things is the if the first page can be cached, okay, yeah. then the brunt of everyone hitting that all at once will be absorbed by the cache, which will not require a PHP worker. And then when the user submits their information, that's when you need the PHP worker. So if you have a lot of people simultaneously filling it out, but you shouldn't, you should get the benefit of caching right up front. So for people that might be struggling with these sorts of scenarios, how can Convesio help? Sure. So we do a number of these services. We help people ensure that their caching is properly configured. We utilize tools like New Relic to understand um, how their backend is performing. And so we're, we're happy to help with uh, any and all of those along with load testing and um, helping you scale your site. So the best way to reach out is just convesio.com or you can email me at tom at convesio.com as well. And then uh, we can chat about the best way to figure out and plan for your high traffic event.